Hi everybody, what's up? How you doing? Welcome to my first brand spanking new game maker tutorial. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how to create a base tic-tac-toe game like the one right in front of you. As you see on the top side, you can see each player has got whether circle or cross and whose turn it is. So by clicking, we can put down a circle. Let's say cross goes here, circle here, cross goes over there, and boom, circle wins. Basically, with this, we'll make it very simple to play a tic-tac-toe game. So without further ado, let's get things started. So, first things first. In the description of this video, there will be a link to the uh, project file that I have right in front of me. In this, there's a sprite included, which has two sub-images, the cross and a circle, both at the size of 160 by 160. And also a background, which is used as a tile set here, as well as at the size of 160 by 160, which is just a white frame around the corners. To get things started, I will do create define a macro. The first one will, a few macros actually to be honest. First one will be the cell width, this is the width of the sprites and the background, which is 160. And three others that I will explain more in detail as we go. This is basically what will be inside the grid, uh, inside the grid that we'll be creating in a moment, but I will explain better as we're creating it. So, we'll have cell width 160, nothing to be equal to minus 1, and cross to be equal to 0. And last but not least, circle to be equal to 1. And that's all we need to do here. Then, we create an object. Go right click an object and add create object. I will call this obj game. Add event, create, go to control, and add in a code. By adding three forward slashes and typing a text, you can change the text that's written here so it's more visible what the code is actually about. I will call this initialize variable and as I say, click tick button, you can see the changes. Now, in here we'll have to do write a few lines of code. First of all, we'll need a grid, variable called grid, and this will be a ds grid create and the width will be the width of the game board itself, which is 3x3. Three three. And then I'll set the, the everything in DS grid to be equal nothing. This could have been also set to minus 1 here, but nothing, as we created in the macros earlier, will make it more readable if you later come back to change it. And after that, I'll also create a last variable called player, and I'll set it to false. Since this is a boolean, if when it's false, it will equal zero, and when it's true, it will equal one. This means that by using a boolean like this, we can determine which player's turn it is. Take here, add event, and we could go for a Actually, before finishing here, we can create a room, setting it to 480 by 640, speed to 60 frames per second, and name RM Game. Just for visibility, I will change the background color to a desaturated darker red. Something along these lines should be good. Setting the snap X and snap Y to 160 and going over to tiles. Choosing the BG game as made here in the backgrounds, I'll create a, the visible grid in the room, and this will be more easy, easier to see by toggling off the snap grid. See, this will be where we'll placing placing the symbols in the game. Then, last but not least, adding the OBG game in one corner. Now we can put the snapping back on and show ready if wanted. Now, next thing we need to do is to go to OBJ game and add in the left press event. Actually, a global mouse 
left pressed. Go back to control, add in a piece of code. And this will be basically check for clicks. We'll basically use this code to check whether or not somebody has clicked in one of the grids. Continuing, we'll want to create two temporary variables. One will be called leg 6 while the other is yy. These will be uh, representing the position in the grid to decide whether or not to place a symbol or not. We'll get to that. So we'll set x6 equal to mouse x div cell width. This will basically see uh, take the current x position of the mouse divided by the cell width, which is 160, and remove every remainder, everything after the decimal. So if the answer mouse x div cell width is equal to 1.5, it will become 1. And we'll do the same for mouse the mouse y. But as there is a, another 160 pixel width on the top, we'll have to include that in here. So mouse x minus 160 div cell width. Or instead of 160, we can also use cell width in case we ever change the cell width to, let's say, 320 or 80 for that matter. Now, using this, we will have to create an accessor to the grid, basically checking the value of the, ex the uh, in the grid, grid, I will show you here, by using a bracket, open bracket, hash, the x and y value, and a close bracket. This accessor can be used to either check what the value of this current position is, like here, we'll check if it's nothing, like that there is no... Uh, symbol put here or you can later as we'll sh I will show you use to change the value of this so if the xxyy the mouse x minus y position of the mouse on the grid is equal to nothing that means that we can place a symbol here so here we'll create I'll link it to a uh, script that we yet have to create, we'll do it right after here called scr type place. I'll give you the argument x is in yy, copy the name and create the script. Name it. Using three forward slashes, we can now uh, designate what kind of arguments this needs, which is here as I use, sorry, x and y. And in this, I will now do a few things. First of all, we'll give the argument to another variable, like this, and that. This will basically put the first argument, the argument 0, x, into x, x, and the second variable into y. Now, by knowing this, we will change the value by using the accessor again. We will change the value at this position to equal player. This could be either a 0 or a 1, depending on what player it is. And then we will change the player to the opposite. So if it's false, it will go to uh, true, and if it's true, it will go to false. Now we're done with the script will go over to actually join the game because if you run it now you'll see the fact that even though we already by clicking on the grid will be placing the symbols we will actually not be able to see that happen here happening clicking will not do much of a oopsie, much of a change on the screen itself so next we'll have to draw it so add a draw event add in some code and let's call it draw the symbols. Here we'll add a double for loop. Let's call the first one row, uh, row and equal to zero. When row is less than ds grid width of the grid width, uh, grid, row will increase. It's basically said that as well the number of row is less than the width of the grid, which is either uh, which is between 1 and 3. The grid width is 3, which will make row some a number between 0 to 2. 
it will increase row. And while it does that, it will also have another variable for column, call. Call is less than ds, grid, height, grid, and call plus plus. So it's basically the same, but in the vertical space. And here we'll have to check if the current grid position, row call, is nothing. Because if it's nothing, then there's nothing to be drawn. So if that's so, we will just want the, it to continue with the for loop without doing any of the code that's going to be under the continue statement. But if it is something, either 0 or 1, depending on the player, we'll have to draw it. So our sub image will create a sub image depending on what symbol there is there, and it will make it equal to the value of the grid. So if if the value is one, then we'll have we will be drawing the character on the first sub image, and if it's zero, we'll draw the character in zero. So draw sprite. SPR char, uh, char sub image as sub image x row and y call. Normally, this would you would think this is enough, but if we run this now, you'll see that there are still a few issues with this. Mostly, actually, just one, and that is that it will actually place the characters in place zero. But one, as you can see, they're only changing by about one to two pixels. So to fix that, we will have to multiply row by cell width and call by cell width. Sorry, and add another cell width to make it go down another 160 pixel, placing it exactly where we want. By running the game now we will see that almost everything is at the correct place. As the game runs, we will see the fact that everything will run like we want it. Clicking on different grid placement will create it, create, sorry, draw a symbol where it's supposed to be. Now the last thing to do is to draw the names. To do that, I'll add another draw, uh, uh, code to draw event, calling draw the names. In here, we'll have to. I will create a few variables. First will be ww, and the other one will be called turn. ww is basically just the width of the current screen. So, for example, in this code, the width is the until this edge. This will be in handy later. And to decide which turn it is, we'll have to do a switch statement on the variable player. In case this is true, then it's one, which means that it's turn, uh, oh, sorry, not turn, but true. In case this is true, then the turn will have to be, it's the circle turn, because that's equal to one. In case it's false, and as it is zero, it has to be cross. And do another break. Now, we'll have to set the H alignment to FA left, FA left, set the color to white, see white, and the alpha to, Z, to 1. This doesn't really make a difference in this program especially, but as you start to play around with the alpha of the different um, objects in your game, this will be kind of important as you want this text to be fully opaque. Here I'll have to draw a text at position 2-2 two, two with the string player1. This will basically draw player1 in the top left corner of the game. And to designate what um, symbol is given, I will draw cross for player1. Now to draw, uh, I'll have to change the alignment for player 2, as I want it on the right side, so H align FA right, and as the color we want it to be the same, and then we'll have to write it out, draw text, 
and here we'll be using the WW that I designated made earlier. And by going two pixels from the two pixels left to the complete right, we'll be drawing it at the correct position. And still at position two Y on the Y scale, and the string will be player two. And then again using WW minus two, putting it to 14 as Y and giving it the circle to player 2, basically like that. And last but not least, we'll have to set the page align to middle to write whose turn it is. Draw, text, and to get the exact middle of the game, we'll have to take the, um, go half of the total width, which is www2. I will keep it on 2 for Y, and the string will be turn plus whose turn it is, basically. And now we should be completely finished with the game, or completely finished with the base of the game. See you in front of you now. The main part of the game is actually finished. We have created the GUI on the top side, as it was from the beginning of this video, the grid on the bottom, the turn in the middle, and the possibility to play symbols on the grid. Now, there's only one more part that's missing, but that's going to be a more of a difficult one, and that is to check whether or not someone actually has won. The checks has not been done yet. As you can see here, there's three in a row, but nothing happens. And the same for circle here, three in a row, and nothing happens. We'll fix this in the next video. So if you enjoyed these kind of videos and would like to see more, then don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so that you can get the video as soon as I upload them. So until next time, goodbye and I'll see you again.